And now to discuss the week's events in Canberra, we were joined a short time ago from Melbourne by government backbencher Kelly O'Dwyer and from Brisbane by opposition backbencher Graham Perrett. Kelly O'Dwyer, Graham Perrett, thanks very much for joining us. Great to be with you, Steve. Cheers, guys. Kelly O'Dwyer, you're a Republican, but do you think it, it's in a do you think it's appropriate for the Governor General to be backing a republic while she's still the Queen's representative in Australia? Well, Steve, it's highly unusual for a current serving Governor General to call for a republic. Uh, but I do think that there are a whole diverse range of views on this particular issue in Australian society. And I think that the Parliament is no different either. There is a range of views from within the Parliament on both sides of the chamber on this question. Uh, as you rightly point out, um, I'm somebody who believes that Australia should have an Australian head of state. I believe that we're a mature democracy and that we can and should have an Australian head of state. However, I'm not sure that this is a number one priority issue right now. We have certainly inherited a lot of problems from the previous government. We need to restore economic confidence. We need to restore the budget bottom line. We need to repeal the carbon tax. There are a lot of issues on the to-do list and I'm not sure that this is up, where, up there in the top ten. Graham Perrett, uh, what did you think of the Governor-General's comments tonight? Well, I haven't read them in full, but uh, I'm very, I take great heart from it. Uh, I, like Kelly, am a Republican, uh, but I think a mature democracy can actually have a, a number of balls in the air. I think a responsible government can actually advance a number of things at the one time. Uh, so this is something that is long overdue as far as I'm concerned. In fact, this is the longest time in the history since Federation that we've gone without a referendum. The uh, Republican refer referendum was over 14 years ago. Uh, it's certainly something that the Labor Party believes strongly in. It's in our in our uh, platform. It's something I believe passionately about. I had a, a function with the, the, a lady who will actually be our, hopefully be our candidate in the seat of Griffith uh, back on the 6th of November, which was the 14-year anniversary of the, um, the re Republican uh, referendum. I, I'm, I was heartened to hear some of those new um, Liberal and National Party members point out in, them, in their first speeches that they were Republicans. So the tide is changing and uh, I think uh, our Governor-General uh, is currently the Queen's representative but uh, rightly points out that Australia as a mature democracy should be able to stand on its own two feet and let an Australian do the job. Kelly O'Dwyer, how will this speech go down in your party room? <laughs> well, look, I can't speak for the entire party room, but I think, as I said before, that uh, a lot of people will think it's quite unusual for a Governor-General who represents uh, the Australian head of state right now, our British monarch, they'll think it's a little bit unusual that she's called for a republic, as she's done. Uh, Graham Perry, the Governor-General might want a republic, but the Australian people, do they want a republic? The ABC Vote Compass at the last election found only 38% of people favoured cutting ties to the monarchy. Well, I think the Australian Republican movement has done some um, uh, polling that suggests that Australians are... Um, quite favourably disposed. I mean, obviously, we, we like our royals. We, um, you know, send a Tasmanian lass off to become a royal. We do like our royals, but I'm not sure that that uh, interest in the celebrity monarchs necessarily equates to the idea that uh, no Australian is good enough to be our head of state. And the reality is uh, Quentin Bryce represents the Queen uh, all of the time, when the Queen is in Australia, then obviously she steps up into that role. Uh, the Crown is the symbol of uh, the, the authority that is given by the people of Australia. You know, since the Australia Act in, in uh, 1980s, in the late 1980s, the reality is we've drifted into all intents and purposes a long way away from that uh, British throne. And the idea that, you know, uh, you know that, it, that because you uh, have some heretic, uh, hereditary link to uh, one person makes you better than everyone in Australia is anathema to people of, you know, sensible Australians. Uh, Kelly O'Dwyer, the Governor-General is normally expected to stay out of politics. What did you make of her endorsement of same-sex marriage? She said that she hoped Australia might become a nation where people are free to love and marry whom they choose. 
Well, look, I think there are a whole range of views on same-sex marriage, just like there are a whole range of views in our Australian society on a republic. And on this question, there has been much debate in the parliament. Uh, I recently gave a speech to the parliament this year where I said I was comfortable with same-sex marriage. I also qualified this, though, and said I do believe that our religious institutions, though, should be able to marry who they wish to marry and shouldn't be forced to marry anybody that they don't wish to marry. Um, I think that that's an important protection that we must always make sure is protected, that religious freedom. Uh, but I think that there are a range of views on this issue. I note that Tony Abbott himself said before the last election that it was going to be a matter for the new coalition party room to determine our position on this issue. Uh, when this issue is debated in the coalition party room, I will advocate for a conscience vote on the issue. Um, but again, I'm not sure that this issue will come up in the near future simply because it has been debated so recently. Graham Perry, your thoughts on the Governor General bringing up this issue tonight? Well, look, this is a, an important topic. You know, uh, I chaired a committee that looked into this piece of legislation, the piece of legislation that Kelly couldn't be bothered to vote for. Uh, you know, even though she's a member of the Liberal Party, she could have crossed the floor to support it. She talked tough and walked soft. Uh, the reality is uh, we had the greatest number of submissions in the history of Federation to the inquiry into same-sex marriage. Australia has moved on. Uh, uh, we would never be asking a religious institutions to change their, uh, the tenets of their religion, but I think the idea of stopping someone from having, uh, having society recognise their committed monogamous relationship is archaic. The reality is we need society to recognise that people that love each other should be allowed to marry, marry each other, and uh, the marriage institution is a wonderful thing to, to protect that committed monogamous relationship. Kelly, Kelly O'Dwyer, you want a quick response there? Well, look, I, I agree with Graeme's last point that I do believe that committed monogamous long-term relationships are the foundation stone of our society and I think that they must be preserved and protected. Uh, I, I do, however, also respect, though, that there are people who have very different views on this issue and question of marriage and I think that we need to be very respectful in the conversation that we have around this to note that there are people on both sides of this debate who have very deep and heartfelt and sincere views. OK, let's move on to Australia's relations with Indonesia. Kelly O'Dwyer, former Prime Minister Julia Gillard today told CNN Tony Abbott should promise not to tap the phone of the Indonesian president in the future. Does the Prime Minister need to do this to win back Indonesia's trust and cooperation? Well, Julie Gillard also very famously said that she wasn't very interested in foreign affairs. So it's, it's, uh, I find it surprising that she's now giving out foreign affairs advice. It has been a very long-standing convention in Australia uh, across the parliaments uh, on both sides that we don't comment on intelligence matters or operational matters. Now, that con convention is being upheld. I think that that is appropriate. We have a very close and warm relationship with Indonesia and we will make sure that that close deep and warm relationship continues and it is for the Prime Minister at the very highest level to have that direct conversation, direct engagement with the President of Indonesia, which he is in fact doing. They are exchanging correspondence. Uh, the Prime Minister has made comments on this to the Parliament and I think that that is entirely appropriate. Graham Parrott, why should the Prime Minister make promises not to tap phones of Indonesian politicians when the former head of Indonesian intelligence, Mr Hendro Priyo, has previously admitted to bugging Australian politicians. Uh, look, uh, I think this might be outside my pay scale. Uh, I, I don't think it's in the interest of, for this strained relationship as it is to have a, some backbencher making comment on it. Uh, look, we, we need to have a strong relationship with Indonesia. That's, that's obvious. I was fortunate enough to be a part of the Labor government that uh, had Cicillo Bang Bang Udiano speak addressed the Australian Parliament, one of the, the most powerful speeches I've heard in my life. Uh, you know, the relationship needs to be strong. We've got 240 million uh, Indonesians right at our doorstep, scattered over, you know, 15,000 islands. We, we need to have a strong connection. I think it's the fourth biggest country in the world. We need to have this relationship right, and I'm sure Prime Minister Abbott will be doing all he can to ensure that the relationship is back on solid, strong ground. All right. Well, Bill Shorten says there should be a more conciliatory approach. Uh, how does Labor want the government to deal with this problem, a problem that has arisen from surveillance that occurred when Labor was in power? 
Well, I, I'm sorry to, to be uh, saying the same thing again, Steve, but the reality is uh, I will leave it to our foreign affairs spokesman and, and the opposition leader, Bill Shorten. Uh, I'm sure that there are sensible adult people involved making strategic decisions. It's in our best interest to have our, our, you know, this, our very populous uh, neighbour uh, happy with us. I, I know that there's tensions there. People obviously do, say and do lots of crazy things in the lead up to elections. Uh, I meant the uh, Indonesian elections, obviously not the um, one in September, although I noticed Mr Abbott had to you know, do a lap of the area apologising to everyone he defended, um, that there are consequences for that, but I'm, I'm sure the diplomats will work it out. Diplomacy is best done uh, behind closed doors rather than on national TV. All right, Kelly O'Dwyer, Major General Hassan Nutt and a senior member of the opposition party that looks most likely to win next year's presidential election said to, uh, this week that Tony Abbott's response to the revelations was not in accordance to the standards expected by Indonesians. What's it going to take to get this relationship back on track? Well, look, Tony Abbott has always said that our closest friend and ally is our neighbour, Indonesia. He made it such a priority that it was the very first country that he visited on becoming Prime Minister. And not only did he visit, but he took over a very high-powered business delegation to also go over to Indonesia as well. Australians have very warm feelings towards our Indonesian neighbours and friends. Uh, we were there for the Indonesians during the tsunami. Uh, we've been there for them during the Bali bombing. Uh, we have provided lots of financial aid and medical aid and all sorts of other aid to our Indonesian neighbours at the appropriate times because we are a good friend and likewise Indonesia has been a very good friend to us. We'll make sure that that relationship stays strong. OK, uh, finally tonight I just want to move on to another topic. At the end of the working week there's some bright news out. The Productivity Commission wants everyone to work to the age of 70. Uh, that is a proposal being put forward. Uh, Graham Parrott, that idea won't be very appealing to a lot of your constituents, I imagine. Constituents who may have worked 40 plus years in either physically or mentally difficult work. Well, look, um, I did take a fair bit of incoming um, uh, uh, helpful advice, I guess, when, when we raised the, the pension age to, nine, to um, 67. Obviously, it's going to be tapered in over a long time. Uh, it was stressful then. To, to increase that by another three years would, would take a long time, and that was, uh, would, would hopefully be the case. Um, obviously, this, uh, the government has received the information from the Productivity Commission. It'd be interesting to see how they respond to that and how they roll out any such implementation. Uh, it'd be pretty, pretty crook to be a 69-and-a-half-year-old on the dole queue uh, looking for a job. Um, but I guess as Australia ages, uh, things we might see the, the world differently. I think there'll be every kid... One in every 100 kids born now will be 100, and I think in 20 years' time it'll be one in every 25 kids will live to 100. So, I mean, the world, we are ageing, but um, interesting times. OK, Kelly O'Dwyer, the Coalition says they're against raising new, new taxes, but the Productivity Commission calculates that taxes would have to rise by 21% unless some steps are taken to reduce the impact of the ageing population on the budget. It's got to be one or the other, doesn't it? Well, obviously, the Productivity Commission is an independent organisation that routinely provides advice to the government. Uh, what they have said today is not radically new news to us. Uh, Peter Costello, when he was the former treasurer of the country, instituted an intergenerational report that also looked at some of these ageing issues and the fact that we would have less people of working age for every person aged 65 and older by 2050. He also noted that the budget would require you know, a tripling of aged care costs and also uh, health care costs. So we know that there are big ticket items ahead. We obviously need to sensibly look at those items and we also need to sensibly look at the current budget at the moment. But we have no plans to change uh, the pension and I think that before Labor starts a massive scare campaign we should very clearly and very directly say that. Graham Parrott, uh, quick response from you. Uh, you know, it's got to be one or the other, doesn't it? Increase of taxation or less expenditure in aged in age care? Well, that would seem to be the logical, uh, dry economic analysis of it. Uh, I, I do know that as, you know, some of those big reforms that, that came in under Labor, uh, such as uh, super, you know, universal super, will make it a little bit easier. But there's some big decisions for the Australian nation in the future as, as we age and age and become unhealthier and unhealthier. So, interesting times. All right, Graham Parrott, Kelly O'Dwyer, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much for joining us. Great to be with you both.